Wendy, and today I'm going to be walking through a tutorial of how to use Grammarly.com. And part of what I do as a grad student, but also just as an educator for the past almost 14, 15 years, is having to write things and not always feeling like my writing was as good as I wanted it to be, or I sounded as professional as I wanted it to, and something as a reading teacher, which I was a reading English teacher for most of my career, there's this stigma of that obviously reading in English people are perfect writers and know all of grammar rules and all of those things. And obviously that is, that is not the case. And so when I came across this tool, um, which Grammarly is a free tool, it very much changed the way I wrote and my confidence in writing. And so I'm gonna walk you through that quickly today. So to get us started, I am going to just open up Grammarly uh, and don't mind all the things that I have open and I already have an account and so um, you can set up your own account it is very simply I can just open a new window and you go www.grammarly.com and mine will automatically log in because I've been here a few times um, you will have to set up an account and like I said the basic is free there is um, options to go to versions that are not free, but for all that I've needed up to this point, I've been able to use the free version. And so very simply, I haven't played a lot with my profile and all of those things because that doesn't matter. That's not what I'm looking for. I am just looking for the editing tool itself. So when I come into this, it takes you to this dashboard type screen and I hit new and it will open up just a blank document of sorts. And there are two things you can do. You can either type from here, which I often do not do, um, just because I type things in Word or in Google Docs or something like that, because that's where I'm comfortable. But you can type in here, or you can copy and paste something that you've typed in another platform, or you could upload a document. So I'm gonna show you both of the ways to do those today. So I'm gonna start by just copy and pasting. So I have over here, this is a paper that I've been working on um, to get published with some wonderful graduate um, students, friends of mine, we're all grad students, but they're friends of mine. And so I could take this and I can just simply highlight and copy a chunk. So just control C um, using my shortcuts. And then if I go back to my Grammarly window, I just click, I hit control V, it's all in there and ready to go. Okay, it doesn't matter about your title all of those things. And what you'll notice is um, your text or whatever you copied is over here on the left. And then the comments that Grammarly found are over here on the right. Um, and so it tells you things like, right, I, we talk about now is viewed from a broader lens. It tells you there could be some confusion here. So keep in mind, Grammarly is obviously a computer. There's not someone on the other end doing this. And so the computer is not always right. They give you hints, they give you suggestions, they give you things to think about but whether you change it or not, it's completely up to you. Um, and then further down here, I say navigate these ML. Well, ML is something we're using to um, abbreviate for multiple literacies. And so it wants me to say this ML, um, but since it's multiple literacies and there's more then it needs to say these MLs. So I'm not going to change that one. And you can come here through here and either um, hit X for ignore it I like it and you can always go back and undo that if you decide oh just kidding maybe not I want to keep this here um, and then it also gives you um, did you mean lens like options and yes we did mean lens here um, and so I changed it to lens and then it gave me another suggestion so did you mean now is viewed from a broader lens or now is viewed through a broader lens um, and in this case we do want from so I would X that out. Uh, and then I go down to Grammarly's next suggestion. And like I already told you, I agree with this one. Um, so I'm going to ignore. I agree with what I typed. Uh, and then the last thing we talk about pre-service and in-service teachers and Grammarly is suggesting. And if you, if you just simply put your mouse on top of it, then it will give you some suggestions. And so it either says that I can hyphenate the word in-service or I can make it two words. It doesn't like it as one word. Um, and in this case, in-service teachers is used. I always oftentimes type and write about pre-service and in-service teachers. It's just the field that I'm in. And 
it doesn't like it hyphenated or unhyphenated just depending upon what I'm doing. And so since I did not hyphenate pre-service, I am choosing not to hyphenate in service. Now, what I will do is go back to the rest of the document and make sure that we were consistent um, so that in everything that we are typing, either we have um, hyphens in our words or we don't and those kinds of things. So that's another piece that's important. Okay, so that's how you simply copy and paste. And if there was more into this document, I would just scroll down and keep picking and choosing and picking and choosing. Um, and once I have it done, I can do a couple of things. What I generally do is download it and then add it to my document. But I can just copy the whole thing um, and it gives you obviously shortcuts if you're not familiar with keyboard shortcuts. It can tell you shortcuts, well this is how you could copy it and then I could highlight the whole thing, copy it straight back to my original document and like I said I can download it and copy and paste it from there. Um, so those are some options. Now if I wanted to upload so if I already had a window open and I was already working on things, you'll notice there are some just tools over here on the left. So you can go back to your home screen, your dashboard where we were at the beginning. Um, this is new if I wanted a new blank document, if I wanted to paste something else, if I wanted to upload, which I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, I already showed you download. This tool lets you choose a little bit more about if you care about spelling, or you don't care about spelling, uh, if you care about grammar, you don't care about grammar, those kinds of things. So you can modify it a little bit. I keep everything on because I want to know as much as possible. Uh, and then this tool is for plagiarism, but it's only available through the, um, the premium version. So you have to pay for that tool. Um, this again is for vocabulary enhancement. If you're looking at I need my vocabulary to be a little stronger. Um, I'm a thesaurus girl, so I often have my thesaurus sitting next to me, so that's not something that I need to pay for, or I feel like I need to pay for. And then there's also um, an upgrade to professional proofreading if you want um, someone that's not a computer, if you want an actual person to read over your document. So that is an option as well. So just to kind of give you a little bit about the tools that are over on the left. and so. The, other, the only other way that I do this, if I don't copy and paste, if I want to say upload the entire document, I click on upload and then it goes through, this is just my download file, um, and I already went ahead and downloaded this document. We'll just pick a different document. Why don't we do this one? So if you can see, it's giving you the bubbles to let you know that it is uploading. And we'll give it a second. And the document I chose is rather large. It's a paper that I, um, this is not the final version, but it's a paper that I have been working on to submit. And so with this one, and it tells you down here on the bottom what they, how many issues you have. So this, it says that there's four critical issues, meaning they're a big deal. Um, and then there's 11 that you'll only catch if you pay for the premium, but most of those aren't a big deal. And so if I go down, I go to the first one and it's problem solving and it's saying that problem solving should be hyphenated. And I agree with that. So I'm going to click on it and it fixes it. Um, if I decided to go back again, I could hit the undo and then it changed the number down here from three to two. And then if I keep going again, I'm not very good at hyphens as you can tell because 21st century is generally hyphenated. So I will agree with that and keep scrolling down, same problem, problem solving. S just keep going down and then this is actually my reference section which it messed up the formatting. Um, so this is not a big deal because it should have been up there anyway. So that's not something that I worry about. Which So this is awesome because, um, like I said, this was not my final document but it was um, in process of my final document. So I had done a lot of work to this point I had gotten feedback from people, I had gone through the whole editing process, which I um, will talk about in a different video, but Grammarly is fantastic because it gives you all these hints and tips and things that I would not have picked up on my own because like I said, I'm not very good at hyphenating words and when words should be hyphenated or should not, um, so it helped me pick it up. And so like I said, this is Grammarly, it is a wonderful tool, it is so easy to use. 
Um, and I highly recommend it. So I hope you try it out.